Hey there, this is Nils Bierfurt, and today I want to show you how to make a sporan from leather. Print out the pattern and cut it out and tape it together. You can design your own or take mine from my website. Trace the shape of the pattern on the leather with an awl or a pen and start cut it out. A hole punch can help you getting into the inner corners. With the strap cutter you can easily cut the straps for the holder. There are three different in this pattern. You might want to check which you want first. Same procedure with the fur, but the big front fur piece does not need to be cut out exactly right now. It's easy to cut the fur with a scissor. Moisten your piece for leather carving and let it set for a few minutes. While this time you can start to trace the lines for the ornament onto the piece. When the leather is mostly dry but still cool on the touch, we can start using our swivel knife to cut in the lines. The moisture content is here the most important part. You want to get not too dry and not too moist. With a groove cutter backwards using I can trace a parallel line to the edge. For stamping I use here a backgrounder and next two kind of bevelers. One is bigger and one is smaller. With a stylist I can get in some soft lines for a nicer texture. Now you want to bevel the edges. With a brush you can get your paint exactly on the leather. You just want to make sure to not overload your brush. And don't forget the edges. Next step is putting on some resist to prepare it for the antique gel. I put on two coats and let them dry completely before I put on antique gel. And I also moisten the edges so I can use the moisture to burnish them. I go with another coat of dye here when the resist is already partly dry and with a paper towel I tap away some of the dye to get in a nice texture. The resist will make sure that the dye is not directly soaked into the leather. When everything is completely dry I put on the antique gel and wipe away all the excess antique gel with a paper towel. This way it will only stay in the deep cuts. And to secure it, I put on another coat of resist. Next, make a parallel line with the wing divider along the edge of the big pieces. This helps you get the holes along the edge on a consistent distance. Even though I trace the holes, this way is more precise. Next is all about hole punching, but you want to leave out the top holes of the front piece. For the back piece you can already punch all the holes, but you want to make sure you get only the holders that you want. Put contact cement on the flash side of the front piece and as well on the big piece of fur. Let them dry for a few minutes and press them together. And also hammer it.
Next you can cut away the excess fur along the edge. Use the edge of the leather as a guide, but still be very careful. I use the piece with the ram head as a guide where to cut away the fur. You want to shave it all down to the skin and also you want to shave along the edge where the holes are. When the fur is removed put on some glue and glue on the ram head piece. Again hammer it down and clamps will secure it for the drying time. While waiting we can start preparing the holders. Here I'm making the traditional Celtic Sporan holder with some D-rings and a strap of leather. Same procedure, some glue and hammering it down. Same for attaching them, but here you get some rivets in as well. They help you get the piece into the correct position. This is the belt holder. You might want to adjust it to your belt. Next, the traditional Sporan holder. And last, specifically the one for my Viking belt. Also, you want to get in a Sam Brown rivet. Glue works here as screw stopper. When the front piece is dried, you can cut away the excess leather and use sandpaper to smooth it out. We'll have to re-bevel and re-dye this edge. Now trace a parallel line on the front piece for the sewing and the rivet holes and punch them. So along these lines, nothing special, just a back and forth to the front and to the back. After sewing you want to set the rivets. I forgot to punch a hole up there, so I do this and also punch all the holes now for the edge weaving. Next put on the closure and set this rivet. You don't want to use glue here. Cut the already punched holes through the fur. For the pompons we need another piece of fur and also a keychain. With an awl or similar you can get easily the holes in. You wanna sew the fur piece in a shape like a pipe and sew the chain right within. Make sure you don't pull in the fur. If not done already, punch the holes for the chains of the pompons. Get the chains through the hole. Here I use a thread and a needle to make this easier. To secure them at the back side, use a keychain ring and simply get in the chains at the correct length. Cut away the excess chain. Next you want to put the long fur piece along the front piece to get in 
the exact length that you need. Then you want to mark this and cut away the fur until you reach this point. It will be folded over like this to make this area more strong. Also shave the fur along the piece where the holes will be. Rough up the lower area along the edge for the glue. Put on the contact cement along this area, only in the bottom area, and also along the edge of the fur piece. And also at the area which will be folded over. After a few minutes you can put both pieces together. Make sure you get the very center of both pieces. I mark this uh, in advance. Carefully put the piece along this glued edge together. Make sure you don't get as less fur in as possible. Take your time and try to get it in as exact as possible. I actually here had to redo it but this wasn't a problem at all. Don't forget to fold over the ends and hammer it together. With a thin knife now you want to also cut the holes into this piece of fur to make weaving easier. King of which, you, I use a needle where I screwed in a lace of leather which is actually about 5 mm wide. The technique goes as followed. Go through the hole and create a loop. Then you want to go through this loop again, in this case from the right to the left. Then tighten the first loop and tighten the second loop. Pull the lace a little bit to the left and to the right and you get a nice and even weaving. Again go through the hole, create a loop, go through the loop, tighten the first loop and then the second one. A little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and you're done. Very important here is to not pull in fur because then it will get really messy. Once again, without fur, you go through the hole, create a loop, go through the loop, and tighten the first loop and the second loop. Put a little bit to the left and the right, and you're done. When the lace is running out, early start to weave in another piece of lace, like I do here on the back side. And the end of the old place you will weave in with the new one. Now we want to do the same procedure with the back piece. Put on the contact cement, put both pieces together, hammer them down, cut in the holes and weave them together. Almost done, just one thing left. Get in the hole on the closure. To get it exactly matched, I press the closure on the Sam Brown rivet and mark it with my thumbnail and punch the hole with a cut in it. And you're done! I hope you liked it. Got some new knowledge techniques from this video. Be sure to leave a like, check out my other videos and my shop and see you next time. Ciao!